like if it's the Lord who builds it, it is the Lord who will be responsible. And if the Lord values it, no one can despise it. Amen? Amen? Amen, right? So whoever values the church of God will be valued. Whoever despises the church of God <laughs> will be despised. And this is the covenant of the Lord all the time. So as you come here, you learn about the word of the Lord, you learn about the covenant. There's one thing you need to know. You learn to value who? The covenant is for who? For you. For you who is in Jesus Christ. So you learn to value yourself. Amen? Amen. Value yourself. Don't think lousily of yourself because God think of you differently. Amen? Amen? Through the covenant of Jesus. Okay? Always remember, even you're still weak now, sometimes you still lose your temperament and all, but God looks at you the way God looks at Jesus. Amen? So value yourself. And if you value yourself, you will value who? You value the church of God. Am I right? Because this is your church. It's the church that God uses to build you up, to redeem you. Amen? So the church of God, you value yourself, you value the church of God, then you value the pastor whom God anointed. <laughs> Not me. I'm a Singapore pastor. You have a pastor here with you every week who edifies you, comforts you, you know, strengthens you, rebuild you, exhort you, you know. Value our Pastor Sarah. Amen. So we are back into solid discipleship again. So every time I talk about discipleship, some people are not too pleased with the word disciple. <laughs> because they always think discipleship is hardship. Amen. <laughs> so discipleship, but we are a church of disciples. We want to build a church of disciples. We're not just building a church of believers. Am I right? So we'll have our fair shares of problems. But I just want to tell you that, I just want to tell you that Jesus' desire, Jesus' very desire is not to just have people believe in Him, but to, truthfully speaking, is to have people follow Him. Am I right? Follow Him. When He calls disciples, He says, Simon, follow me. Andrew, follow. Matthew, follow me. Simon, follow me. I'll make you fishes of men. Amen? Follow me. The key word is follow. You need to see where Jesus is and then walk with him and follow him. And that is Jesus' very desire. And uh, some people might want to ask me, then, Pastor, how about, you know, some people when, when they came to Jesus, you know, some people when they came to Jesus and they say, oh, Lord, I want to follow you. Teacher, I want to follow you. Jesus said, foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. <laughs> So he's, it seems that he's dissuading people to follow him. No. I tell you, Jesus never dissuade people from following him. But he just wants people to be clear. He wants you to be clear. When you walk this path of faith, you see, and you know why Jesus has to test you. Jesus doesn't want you to suffer, but Jesus wants to refine you. Refine is the word. Because why? Why, why did God have to refine you, sanctify you when you came to him? When you come to Him, Lord, I thought I'm in this for a good life. Yes, it's a good life in Jesus Christ. But why do you have to refine me? Because the enemy is not outside you. Where is the enemy? Inside. Yes. It's your desire. The enemy inside you that stirs your desire. The enemy inside you that makes you think lousily of yourself. Then you think lousily of your family members and all, you see. It's the enemy right there giving you the prejudice giving you the low self-esteem, giving you the guilt, the condemnation, you see? The enemy there that frustrates you inside. See, that's why yesterday I keep talking. Some people, you know, they feel so condemned when they come to church. They hear the Word of God. The Word of God sanctifies them. You know, Jesus, Jesus gives the Holy Spirit not to condemn. Jesus gives the Word not to condemn, but to convict. You got what I mean? Conviction is the Word, not condemnation. Some people don't know, say grace, everything is grace, you know, so we just look to grace. No, how would you understand grace without understanding your sin? You get what I mean? How would you understand healing without understanding your disease, your problem? Am I right? So that's the whole thing. You know, Lord, what's wrong with me? What is this flesh in me? What is this world that is tempting me every time? But I want to resist it. I couldn't because of this enemy inside me. So I want to deal with him. I want to deal with this. And this is called healing. And so some people say, it's so tough to live life like that. You know, it's not tough. When you could follow Jesus, you see Jesus where he is and you follow him, life is not tough. 
Life is tough when you walk yourself. Am I right? You live by yourself. You just go to church on Sunday, and then you live all your lives apart from your sun, Sunday sermon or whatever voices that you heard from God. You just receive comfort on it, then you live your own lives. You manage your own finance, you know, wherever thing, you manage your own time, you do it your own. That's why life is tough. Something happened, you're in for a shock. You see? So you're always worrying, uh, always despairing, despondent, you know. You don't know why God is doing this to you, but God is not doing all that to you. God is still with you. Amen? So, how to really see Him in our lives? How to see Him and live victoriously? The answer is still in what? The answer is still in prayer. That's why we are in this topic on prayer. I just came to cover uh, three sermons on prayer two months ago. Okay, go back to listen. Okay, I would suggest each time before I come, you listen to the message, get a recap. So, now how to see the Lord and follow Him? People want to ask me. You follow the Lord where? In your spirit, am I right? Because your spirit is the part that guides all your thoughts, all your judgment. Then from there, you know how to choose, where to go, who to mix with, what to say, you know, how to live your daily living. So, prayer is a practical thing. It got to do with your living. If you separate it from your living, from your lifestyle, from the people you mix with, uh, you don't know, just pray. This is only a ritual, or you pray in the morning, but it doesn't have anything to do with your life after that. You just attend Sunday service, but the sermon has nothing to do with a financial problem, uh, with the things that you're upset about. I mean, God is telling you things, you see? You're living. God walks with you. Always remember that. God doesn't just tell you concept, theory, and then that's it, you see? People think wrongly about God. And Jesus came in the form of flesh to show every of the believers that how He walked with Father. You see, my father is always at work till today, and I too at work. You see, what do you mean by work? You mean only serving the Lord as work? <laughs> no, right? You eat, you drink. I mean, you, you mix this, you socialize with people. You go to work, you see? This is the, these are the things where Jesus walked with you. You watched the World Cup Finals yesterday, right? <laughs> Jesus is there watching too. You have to see that part, and then you can enjoy whatever you're doing, you see? And this is the part where we all miss. We separate prayers and living. When we separate it, God becomes irrelevant. Jesus becomes irrelevant. That's why people don't go to church. People just go there, you know, just pay lip service and all. Because it's not real. But it's real. All the time. Okay? So I want you to learn this. Come, let's turn to uh, John. Let's turn with me to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Can we turn to John chapter 14? John chapter 14, verse 15. Let's see. We read this verse yesterday. Uh, verse 15, you see. Jesus promised the Holy Spirit. And Jesus promised the Holy Spirit. Now, listen. People always understand Holy Spirit in a very special way. Today, I want you to understand the Holy Spirit in a common way. Huh? When you say Holy Spirit, what is it? Whoa, you see some light from heaven. You had some dreams that you haven't had before. <laughs> so you say, that's the Holy Spirit convicts me. Now, let me ask you, how many times do you have special dreams? Once in a long while. <laughs> you see? But the Holy Spirit is in you 24 hours when you watch TV, when you go shopping, when you're dating, you know, when you go to church, everything. The Holy Spirit is there to guide you in every way. You see? So, Holy Spirit is there to help you pray, to see God, walk with Him, follow Him. You see? That's the thing. You must understand the Holy Spirit like that. When I talk to Sarah, you see, the Holy Spirit is working through our conversation. Am I right? When I teach my children, when I teach my children, the Holy Spirit is working through a parent, giving the instruction to the children, giving values to him or her. You see, you must know that when you are watching uh, a game of soccer, <laughs> yeah, what is the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit gives you the excitement. When you go to sleep, Holy Spirit gives you the sleepiness. Ah, you must understand Holy Spirit in a relevant way. You see, people will teach about Holy Spirit in the church differently. Or I would say only in a very special way. You see, that's why believers find no relevance in Christianity. And this is what I want to build you up with. Discipleship is about this. You can walk with Jesus. If there's any point of time you're doing something, 
you feel God is not there, you cannot feel God is there, and that is the thing that you didn't do it with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Now you know. Okay, come, let's go. John chapter 14, verse 15. And Jesus said, If you love me, you will obey. You will obey what I command. And now, many people say, If you love me, you will obey what I command. So people start thinking, Oh, command. So I just listen to the command. One, two, three, four, five, ten commandments until ten. I tell you that's wrong. This is not what Jesus meant. Did Jesus command you today? Little things he commanded you. Through what? Through the Holy Spirit. Even as you talk, as you eat, as you sleep, as you play, Holy Spirit is commanded, instructing you, telling you, enjoy this. You know, don't be angry. Uh, you know, uh, be gentle. You know, and that kind of thing. Holy Spirit is telling you everything. You know, every way of your life. So if you love Jesus, you want to seek Him, you will hear Him. You will hear His instruction, commandment in everything. Not just, okay, I just do the Ten Commandments for you. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't commit those things, you know. So Lord, you know, I'm here. I have the Holy Spirit. No. Now you understand Holy Spirit this way, you never understand Holy Spirit. Okay? That's why a lot of Christians, they're living a dead Christian life. Jesus said, my word, my spirit is living and active. And my spirit sets you free. And why are you living by commandment, by commandment, and you think that I'm there? You see, all the priests and the Israelites, they follow the commandment. They say, oh, I've brought sacrifice to you. God says, I'm sick of your sacrifice in Isaiah. It's not as if you didn't pray. It's not as if you didn't come for church or Sabbath. But look at you, the way you are following me. You don't understand what does it mean to love me, to listen to my command, you see? You understand? So, verse 16, and I, I ask the Father, if, if you obey what I command, I will ask the Father, and He will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. And the world cannot accept Him because it neither sees Him nor knows Him, but you know Him, for He lives with you and will be in you, in you, in the way you think, in the way you work. In the way you live, you see everything, everything you are doing. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you before long. The world will not see me anymore because I'm going to become invisible. But you will see me. You see, God has to become invisible. Am I right or not? If you want to meet God in full, you've got to meet the invisible God. Am I right? If you only meet God in a physical way, that is not God in full. Because God fills the whole universe. He fills everything. All the relationship you have, there's God inside there. The money you spend, God is inside there. Uh, even the wounds that you experience, the pain there, God is inside there. That is sustaining you sometimes, you know. You feel painful, but there you still live on because God is there. He's invisible. He incarnate into different situations, you see. But many people only seek to see the physical God, you see. And you hear special sermons and all. Um, some people say, wow, Pastor Vincent, come. This is a great message and all. But you don't hear things for yourself. You don't hear how the Holy Spirit speaks to you individually. Speaks to you in your problem. No use. That's no use. After Pastor Vincent go, there you are, dead again. You see? You know what I mean? I'm into this discipleship. I'm not interested in every other thing except discipleship really raise you up as remnants, disciples who know how to follow the Lord and know how to heal Him. You see, verse 19, Before long the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. You see, I do everything you do likewise. This is the commandment I gave to you. And then you go on and verse 20, On that day you will realize that I am in my Father and you are in me and I am in you. Whoever has my commands, Let's take it this way. Whoever has my will and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. So listen, if you have my command and listen to it, you are the one who loves me. Many people want to love God, but I really have to say, it's sad that People don't know how to love God. Christians don't know how to love God. They think that by obeying something, doing something, some ritual, they are loving God. Not necessary. 
Okay, later I'm coming to that. Okay, I'm, I'm coming to the, I'm talking about Holy Spirit together with prayer. You see, you know the Holy Spirit, how He dwells in you, and then you understand prayer. I'm not talking about Holy Spirit in the mystical way as what many denominations are talking about. I'm talking about Him in the holistic way. Okay, and this is whole, what the message of the whole Bible is all about. Okay, come, let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 12. You know, every time we read the book of Romans, there's always two parts to the book of Romans. I've said in my earlier message, I'm not going through this, because I always say chapter 1 to 11 is the first part, where Paul talks about the whole gospel of Jesus Christ, you know, how we were born in sins, and uh, for all have sinned, fall short of the glory of God, and then there comes, there comes the salvation of Jesus, by faith we became righteous, and, and then this is not from yourself, because chapter 9 it talks about God's sovereign choice. It is God who made you believe, who God who sent the messenger to preach so, and convict you to believe so that you can call the name of Jesus and sit right here right now. Am I right? So it's God's work. I will have mercy on whom I have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. That's what God says. So now you know your soul love. You are blessed, chosen since the creation of the world. So now, chapter 12, what's the first word? Therefore. Hallelujah. <laughs> Dominic knows, right? Therefore, it's a linkage now. After knowing the full gospel, I want you to get the linkage. Okay? The Holy Spirit convicts you through the gospel. But now, practically, therefore, how to know the Holy Spirit guides you? And let's read together verse 1 and 2. 1, 2, 3. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now, you always know the perfect will of God. You must always know the perfect will of God in conjunction with the Holy Spirit. If you know the perfect will of God in something, listen, if you know the perfect will of God in something, the prompting of the Holy Spirit will be very clear. You understand what I'm trying to say? Let me give you an example. If I know the will of God for this church, how God is leading this church, what is the timetable of God, how God is going to build this church, I know the will, the perfect, pleasing will of God for this church. Then every message I bring forth is from the Holy Spirit. Because it, it emphasizes the right thing. It hits the right note. You see? Some pastor can preach a lot of things, dynamic messages, but if it's not the emphasis of God right at that moment, it's not the very perfect, pleasing will of God for that group of people, people don't get it, you see? It's not relevant to them. So, even if I counsel a person, if I counsel a shepherd, I don't just give him, oh, this is the doctrine, this is the concept, this is the commandment, and all. I ask that person, is this mine? Hold on. No, sorry. When I counsel a person, learn this, okay? When I counsel a person, I know what he is going through. What the Holy Spirit is doing in his or her life. It's like I talk to Joel, I know. For the past few months, how God has been guiding you. So I give you the really concrete answers, the will of God. And you know, when you hear it, you are cut to the hearts, you saw the relevance, you know that is from the Holy Spirit. You see? You must learn this, church. Okay? Don't learn doctrines that are dead. It must be living and active. That's why Jesus said, after knowing the gospel, it's not just gospel. Gospel becomes your daily living, the perfect will of God for you. I'll give you an example. Now, how do I know? How do I, when I see Mirel, how do I get the right feeling for Mirel? The right feeling. <laughs> oh. When I know the perfect will of God for her. I used to love her because, because before I know you guys, I love her because the daughter of Sarah and Jim. <laughs> so simple as that. Because you are a daughter of your blessed parent, so I take it as you are blessed. <laughs> you get what I mean? But there's one day onwards, I began to speak to her, saw what she's going through. 
I begin to see the God-fearing side of her. I begin to see what God is doing on her. I begin to know, yeah, she as an individual is loved by God, going to be used by God. God has a plan for her. So from that day on, when I converse with her, I give her meaningful, <coughs> purposeful words from the, word, from the Lord. You see, this is called the way of God. So you got to learn this. How do I get the right anticipation of Jim? When I saw how God values him. Oh, you know, he ever went around Europe with 36 ringgit. <laughs> the other day I was telling him, you'll go around with 36 lesson. <laughs> Again, this is the second time he's going around. I'm just giving him a vision, am I right? It may not be so, but it's a vision that he has. Why? God, at this age of his, let him hear this message and he finds a fire in him again and now he's listening to the messages again, you see? I mean, God has a purpose in everything, you see? So you saw the will of God, you give them the will, they know, oh, God is leading me in this direction, this is a prayer God had for me, so I will know that's from the Holy Spirit. And your heart confirms, your spirit confirms it. You get what I mean? You teach a child. You don't just discharge parental responsibility. Your parental responsibility, no meaning. <laughs> Eat, sleep, study, wake up, and you go through the routines and all. You must know from since young how the Lord leads your, your son or your daughter. Sometimes you pray for him, you saw what actually the Lord is teaching him. And there is something in his life that God is really uh, using or refining. You know, when he's two years old, when he's five years old, when he's seven years old, you know it. So, no, Lord, I know you're going to use this person. You see? Just a gyro. It always makes us with the Indians. <laughs> the Indians, oh, wow, they're all friends of him, you know. Go around, wow, this fella. And then, <coughs> wow, his English, really good. So, he makes us with the Indian, tell them about Jesus and all, you see. I mean, of course, they take it as a pinch of salt. This is a kid, little kid. And then, but I began to see, hey, how God is going to use this kid. You see? So the parents have to test the will of God. You've got to be very clear about how God is moving him, guiding him, shaping him. And then you will be able to give the right teaching and nurturing to the kid. You see, this is how you teach a child through the Holy Spirit. The people misunderstand what the Holy Spirit is all about. See, so I want you to, to see all these things. You see, how about marriage? When we, say about, when we talk about marriage, before you really give a get to marriage life, you've got to see how God values your marriage. If you're a Christian, you marry a Christian. Basically, every time I see Christian marry each other, but they look like common couples. They look at themselves as like ordinary couples. No. Because the Bible says, the, if you look at the promise of God, if you are in Christ Jesus, you get married, you'll be like Abraham and Sarah. Because if you are in Christ Jesus, you inherit the inheritance of Abraham. That's why Galatians chapter... 3 verse 29 says, you are heir of Abraham. You see? So you marry another girl, you don't just look at me, another girl, another pretty girl. <laughs> she is Sarah. Sarah. So Abraham and Sarah, we have the promise, though we are weak, but we have the promise of Sarah and Abraham. Abraham and Sarah. Father of all nations, mother of all nations. We, we look at ourselves this way, and we give birth to a kid, to our child, we look at him as Isaac, the promised child. You see, you have to know the way of the Lord. Believe first and then know the way of the Lord and then slowly test how the Lord is going to use your lives, your marriage, and your kid and then your whole family life will be meaningful and purposeful. And there's a whole thing I want to drive across to you. It's all in your daily living. See, my message is always practical, practical. I always say that, you see. I'm not giving you some doctrines or whatever. So, I've been telling you again and again, uh, Charlene and Take Home, right? You know, Pastor Vincent is so nice. Ah. Why Pastor Vincent always talk about us, value us so much, as if I can be bothered, you know? <laughs> oh, I, just, I was just telling them, Take Home, you're going to leave us soon. Charlene, the most, you'll be one year with us. It's no point for me to keep telling you things and, you know, comforting you. Why? Because I saw how the Lord values both of you. Sometimes you feel weak, struggling, but you still end up here. That day I asked, who doesn't want to come to service, right? I know many of you wanted to put up your hands, <laughs> but no one put up. 
<laughs> don't feel like coming, also don't want to say. But anyway, you were here. You get what I'm trying to say or not? It's not because of Pastor Vincent you came, but because the Holy Spirit prompts you. There's an inner spirit in you, the spirit of sonship. Go la, take home. Go la, Charlene. Go. That is a place you find happiness. Go. Oh, go la, go, go, go. Okay. <laughs> then sit here, and then you receive grace. And you see, feel your problem goes. You see, after hearing the word of God, your problem goes, you're set free. That's why the Holy Spirit rewards you. You see? Now you must hear this. The, the problem is you don't hear this. If you hear this, you'll be strong. You have the fighting spirit. Yeah, I must come the next time, definitely. I'm not going to be deceived again. No matter how weak I feel, I'm going to come. You see? That's the whole idea. Prayer and living. So, when we say, so, just now I talk about the will of God. The will of God, right? The will of God in your living. Every way of your living, God is right there. Now, we talk about the will of God. <clears throat> if you know the will of God in every area of your life, and you live according to it, it will be like what we just read. Jesus said, because I live, you also will live. You see, people don't understand what I mean by that. How to live? How to live as Jesus lived? You know, people don't understand this verse. The verse is talking about the will of God. You see, you know the Lord is going to tell this fellow something you just said. <laughs> Say, you know, it's Jesus who said through you. You know, it's the will of God to go to work now. You go to work happily. And you go to work in the Lord. Happily with assurance and joy. You know, it's the will of God for you to watch soccer yesterday, you know? Oh, you know it's the will of God? Enjoy it. With liberty, you see? Enjoy it. Dating, enjoy it, you see? You know it's the will of God. Because He lives, I live. So you are doing nothing apart from Jesus. The Holy Spirit prompts you like that. See, many people don't understand what is spiritual. When I say, are you a spiritual Christian? Oh, what is your... Definition for spiritual. Read Bible, spiritual. <laughs> Prayer, spiritual. Oh, this fellow always pray. No, pray three hours a day. Spiritual, man. Spiritual. <laughs> no, that's not spiritual. What's the definition of spiritual, Mi Michelle? <laughs> <laughs> Difficult. Uh. This one you can answer. I give you a big treat, man. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, uh, they, my, my guys always say, Pastor Vincent, ask the question he asks. Uh, no one can answer one. He always has a different answer. <laughs> But if you listen, if you follow my message, uh, if you follow my message, you can get, get the answer. What is spiritual? <laughs> listen, uh, listen. Is shopping spiritual? Watching World Cup spiritual? Eating spiritual? Sleeping, is it spiritual? Of course, you don't have to say it. Attend service is spiritual. Attend meetings is spiritual. These are also spiritual. I'm not discounting that. But you see, spiritual, definition of spiritual is if you can do anything in the Lord, in the Lord, that is spiritual. Amen? Amen. Or not? You don't amen, I mean you don't understand. <laughs> don't understand. If you could do anything, play, enjoy, watch TV, you can do it in the Lord. In the Lord. You can teach your child in the Lord. That is spiritual. It's spiritual stuff. God is pleased with that. You get I me? Mean? Okay, Jeremy. You watched World Cup yesterday? <coughs> you watch it in the lot? Yes, sir? Huh? <laughs> really? <laughs> Why the hesitant? <laughs> okay, now what's the definition of in the lot? In the in the joy, in the assurance, in the conviction of the Lord. You see? Oh, you watch World Cup is there, huh? Oh, if Spain lose, I'm not going to school. Um. <laughs> you watch it like that. Oh. <laughs> ah, you see? You're not watching in the Lord. You watch it in the Lord. You enjoy it. Find empowerment. You, you, you get what I mean? Everything, you rest, you get recharged. So that to what? You get up again and you serve the Lord. You get up again and follow the Lord. You see? So God is in our everything. Every movement. Every speech. You get what I mean? So you can do it in the Lord. Today I sleep. I sleep in the Lord until 12 a.m. Almost one. 
12, not 12 a.m. Sorry, 12 p.m. <laughs> 12. Why? Because I I know the Lord wants me to rest. There's a meeting at night. You see, uh, we watch the World Cup. So Lord want me to rest in peace and then get up. Yeah, I saw Norman and and this Helen came ready. So I said, give me 20 minutes. I have to face the Lord. So I quiet down myself, look to the Lord, and what is the message He wants to give to me? What are the words of encouragement He wants me to give to all of you? So look to the Lord and see. And then I come back, re recharge, and go out with you guys, you see? And we have meaningful conversation. It's all done in the Lord. With empowerment. With meaning and purpose. You see? So I don't... I'm very focused. You, you realize? I'm very focused. When it's time to play with my kids, I really play with them. Have fun with them, really. My three kids. They really love me. But when it's time to work, no one can disturb me. You see? But if I plan something, another thing happened that I have to change my plans. It's not difficult for me to change my plan. I can just change it. You see? Because I want to follow the Lord. So you get what I mean? So in everything. So now people want to ask, Pastor, so many things in life. How to you know, really know the will of the Lord in everything? You see, that's why the Bible says you have to test the will of God. But b before you test, the Bible says, do not confirm, do not conform to the standards of the world, but be renewed, renewed, right? By the renew in your spirit, the transformation of your spirit. What do you mean, conform to the world? Yesterday, I just talked about the world hates you. Am I right? The world hates who? Hates who first? Hates Jesus first. Am I right? So if you, the world can give you all kinds of things, entertainment, joy, whatever, money, finance, you know, as long you don't follow Jesus, as long you don't share about Jesus, as long you don't test His will. So that's why, you see, the thing you do least is testing the will of God. You can go to church, you can sit down and pray, but you seldom test the will of the Lord. Amen or not? Before you all know me, before you know me, before I give you this understanding of the word, you ask your conscience. You hear the word, but no relevance to your daily lives. Am I right? You, ne you seldom see the Lord in your spirit guiding you. Like what I said just now, you do things in the Lord. Everything in the Lord. Am I right? So, it's so difficult to do that. Why? Now the question is why? Because you don't have a belief system. Come, say it together with me. Belief system. I said, I preached about this before, right? Belief system. You see, after knowing the Word of God, after knowing the Bible, there must be an absolute systematic way of thinking in you so that you can see everything, judge everything through this system. Belief system. And then from there, you get the answers. You get a perfect will of God. So without this system, you cannot differentiate. You are thinking with your own desire or God's desire. Does that mean people ask, how do I know this is my desire or God's desire? Am I right? Ah. You keep on asking 100 years or so the same. Nothing changed until you get your belief system right. Your belief system. So that's why I say, some people say, I want to love God. I want to love Him. But excuse me, I want to ask. How do you love God? You don't have belief system. You love God the way you want. You love God in your comfortable way. The way that's easy for you. Or your way. It's not God's way. You got to love God God's way. Am I, am I right? You get, you get what I mean? So what is the belief system? It's equivalent. Is there something called a belief system in the, in the Bible? Is there a belief system in the Bible? No word... No, no words say, uh, talk about this belief system but there's a word called temple in the Bible the Bible from the start to the end emphasizes about temple Israel was always building a temple do you realize that? temple demolished God is not pleased with it rebuilt again Jesus come this temple I will demolish it three days later I'm going to rebuild it with my body and don't you know right now Jesus lives in you and you are the temple of God the Holy Spirit lives in you Temper, you see? The temper is a belief system. You look at something through this temper. 
It's Holy Spirit, right? The belief system. You look at something, you judge something through this temper, you get the right information. You get the right will of God. You hear me? So, belief system, you must have it. So, I always say, you want to live right, we're talking about living right, pray and living. You want to live right, you got to what? Believe right. But I want to say, some people say, when some people say, live right. I want to live right. I want to believe right. B-E-L-I-E-V-E. -E -E, believe right. So I believe I'll be blessed. I'll have prosperity. You know, I'll have everything I want. That's the wrong kind of belief. Now, you have believe what you want to believe. That's why I say, believe. B-E-L-I-E-F. It's a system you have to have in your lives. Mm. Listen up. Huh? When you have this belief, you will think judge and perceive things from the right perspective so when you have this belief system you will know how to think through christ because the way you live comes from the way you think say again think through christ can you think through christ or not can you think through christ christ listen up huh? if you don't know how to think through christ you ain't going to fail as a christian because Anything in this world can fail you. Right? Right thing, huh? Anything can fail you, right? Hmm. Even NUS, you manage to go in also will fail you. Scully, it fail you, no? <laughs> you don't know. But Christ will not fail you. You get know what I mean? Christ will not fail you. So you know how to think through Christ. And God says, really, you know, anyone who think through Christ will not be ashamed, will not be put to shame. So how? What is this all belief system all about, Pastor? Can you tell me about that? What is the Bible says? It's so important about this belief system. Christians who come to the Lord, you know, they, they never know belief system. You look at them, they are never Christ-like. They can know a lot of things. Do you see Christians in church, they know a lot of things, but when it comes to the very important things, they make a decision, they don't know how. The way they live, you know, some people they know a lot of Bible knowledge. You live with them, ah, wow, thorough, no, thorough. Cannot live with them. Cannot tahan their way of living, you know. Oh, very inconvenient. These people are inconsiderate, you know. That's why that means that whatever they know, they cannot live without. So, whatever they know is just knowledge, no use. There must be a belief system. 1 John chapter 1, verse 12 says, Yet to all who believe Him, who, who receive Him, who believe in His name, Jesus Christ, God gave them the right to become children of God. Children of God. So the first belief system you need to have, and you must have, is an identity, listen up, identity belief system. Identity system of belief. That is a child of God system of belief. A child of God. Listen, no matter what role you are playing, you're a father, you're a mother, you're a son, you're a daughter, whatever, you're a pastor, you're a minister, I don't care. No matter what role you're holding, no role is greater than the role as a child of God. Amen? You, you, you get what I'm trying to say? And you didn't seem to get what I'm saying. I'm trying to emphasize something here. What I'm trying to say is, you can fail as a parent sometimes. You can fail as a child. You can fail even as a pastor, as a minister. But you will never fail as a child of God. You get what I mean? Amen or not? You will never fail as a child of God. Because you will never lose this. You will never lose this. Because of this, God is always with you. You can fail your business, your studies. But you will never fail as a child of God. That's why God gives the identity, the seal, the seal first. So everything, you think through this. You don't try to think like a child of God. You think as a child of God. Think like a royal priest. Think like a, think like a heavenly citizen. Think, that, think with the mindset that God is with you. Think with a child of God mindset. Amen or not? So you don't... Even now I'm saying this, huh? But later on, uh, you see, you don't do it. <laughs> you don't do it. <laughs> when you are, when you're going to be, when you're going to be upset, when you're going to get frustrated, you don't think through this. Of course, we cannot control our temperament at times. Am I right? 
We cannot control. We still get angry. Child of God also get angry. But you get angry already, but you don't get condemned. Am I right? You get angry already, you still face Lord. Lord, you know I'm weak, but I know you love me for what I am. You see? This is called thinking as a child of God. There's nothing can separate you from the love of your father. You got to mean in Jesus Christ. So that's why even for David, he committed adultery, murder, whatever. When Nathan rebuked him, he said, I have sinned. I agreed with the Lord fully, I have sinned. So forgive me. Then he wrote the Psalm, right? Psalm 51, you know, he faced the Lord. Can you imagine that? You know? Many a times, you know, we feel condemned. Why? Because we don't think through this. This is exactly the way God looks at us. If you lose this, you never hear the voice of God correctly. This is the platform, child of God, the only platform for you to enjoy victory, sanctification, whatever, you know, all kinds of gifts, heavenly gifts from above. You want to enjoy all those things, faith and all. You must have this child of God platform first. That's why the Holy Spirit is the spirit of what? Sonship. Daughtership, <laughs> sonship, same thing, right? So every time you can think through this, that's right. That's the right conviction, all right? I say again, you can fail as everything. Those fail exam one, don't be sad. You can fail as a student also <laughs> sometimes, but you can never fail as a child of God. So we got to systemize our thinking this way, systemize. You say, we are born with spiritual problem. What do you mean spiritual problem, Pastor? Spiritual problem, you, you are born you are born not to think with the correct identity that God has given you since the creation of the world. You are born to think lowly of yourself. You are born to absorb yourself into situation, problems, you know. Am I right? You are born like that. That's why now, I want to demolish, demolish your old way of thinking, the old way of written code, and then systemize this belief in you, child of God. Amen or not? This is what the church should teach about, I felt. Don't you think so? The fundamentals are, if you're not well taught, whatever message you have in the church is not going to set people free. It's not going to help anyone. Your spiritual experience, wherever, that's your experience. It can only be experienced by certain people, but not everyone. You get what I mean? So, and then, what is it you've got to systemize? Those who are called in Christ Jesus, children of God, you are given what? Absolutely, you are given the covenant. The covenant, this word came from the Bible, you see? Covenant. Christ is the covenant. God made a covenant with His people. You see, if you are my people, my covenant is for you. Right? You never lose it. I'm talking about something that we never lose. Covenant. What is a covenant? I always, I always tell you, covenant equals to the four gospelization I'm talking about. Oh. Some people, for the first time here, you don't know why it's four gospelization. If you look at Abraham, I give you an example. Abraham, Abraham, I called you to make your name great, right? You, you are the source of all blessing when God called him. So this is individual gospelization, you know, I'm with you. And then you are the father of all nations, right? You, all kings and nations will come through you. Family gospelization, regional gospelization, and world gospelization. The world, kings, nations will be impacted because of you. You got what I mean? You are small. Even you are a small group here right in Penang. But you must think big. It's okay to be, have small church, but it's not okay to think small. You got what I mean? Because the covenant of the Lord is given even to the disciples, the fishermen, the unschooled, the ordinary, go and make disciples of the world. Nations, am I right? You see, this is a real thing. If you cannot see yourself with this standard, right now, you cannot see with this standard, that is a spiritual problem. That is, you are devaluing yourself. Doesn't matter, you cannot do anything big now, but you must see things like that. Amen or not? Amen. This is the mindset I want you to have for gospelization, you know? Uh, so don't ever think that things happen to you because of sheer coincidence. You see, Paul, Paul, when he's put in prison, in chains, he said, my chains have served to advance the gospel. So it's clear to the imperial guards that I'm chained for the gospel. 
It's clear to brothers throughout the region that I'm in chain for the gospel. And they're encouraged to preach the gospel now, you see? In chains. Chains is your condition. You fail your exams, that's your condition. You have a broken marriage, that's your condition. But the covenant still holds. Serve to advance the gospel. Amen or not? Amen. You see? You never lose this. You never lose this thing. This is the absolute. So, uh, don't be sad, okay? Sometimes in life, people say life's, cr life's cruel. It's never cruel with God. Because you can fall out of love sometimes. You can go bankrupt. You can have bad health. But the covenant of God always hold. Amen, huh? This one. You want to have the right belief system? This is the, the way you study the Bible. You study the Bible this way. Now, very important, okay? Very important. Listen up. I'm going to just cover three for belief system. Three. Three things. Then, what is the belief system you need to have? Is you need to have a belief system that know the perfect will of God. Exactly of what we have read just now. The perfect will. The Bible talks about nothing but the perfect will of God. It has the perfect will of God in everything. If there's anything you encounter which you don't know the will of God, you come to me. You read the Bible first. If you still cannot get it, you come to me. Okay. The Bible gives the perfect will for everything. Take for example, marriage. But this perfect will, huh, is you got to study it this way. That's priority. Let's, let's take for instance marriage because we are all in this. Anyone not married? <laughs> you, you know I talk about marriage. Even those not married also interested in marriage. Sometimes. <laughs> marriage. What's the first thing you think about marriage? I love this guy. I love that woman. No. The first thing is the perfect will of marriage is Jesus is the Lord of marriage. Am I right? Simple. He's the Lord over my marriage. Okay? Then you come and talk about, so, if God is the Lord over this marriage, it is God who gave me this love for this woman, to marry her, and to be one in flesh. So one in flesh meaning what? You got to complement one another. It doesn't mean both are perfect. Because both of you are imperfect, that's why, you got to complement to be one. Half, half. Plus together, one. Okay? This one careless, this one sensitive, plus together, just right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, just right. Just right. Okay? Uh, this one very miser, this one magnanimous, uh, plus together, just right. <laughs> just right. That's why God prepared. Hallelujah, man. I will share about my testimony between my, my, me and my wife, right? Okay, but listen up, listen up, what I'm trying to say. So compliment one another because one in flesh. Okay? But, Pastor, this is an ideal situation. Uh. No one can do that. <laughs> Not every time we can do that, you know. Frankly speaking. Sometimes the man, you know. Because how to compliment? The Bible says how to compliment. The practical way to compliment is the man must love the women. The women must submit to the man. Ideal situation. Ideal. Sometimes the women don't submit. How? Sometimes the men expect too much. How? You see, this kind of thing happened in the marriage. So whose fault? Your fault, my fault. You didn't submit. You didn't love me. You didn't respect me, whatever. Gone. Gone. You see? You get the will of God wrongly. So, what is the will of God? What is the first thing I say? The Lord is what? Over the marriage. The Lord is over. He is the Lord of marriage. So, when both of you it's in deadlock. This one cannot respect, that one cannot submit. How? You all don't look at each other. Look to the Lord. He's the Lord of your marriage. You get what I mean? He's the one who changed you. He's the one who sanctified the marriage. So you look at each other, you get worse. Look to the Lord. You see? So when you look to the Lord, the Lord convicts you, comforts you, strengthens you, and then you can compliment again. You see, this is how I live with my wife. Very clear cut. It's very clear cut, but you, you cannot know things all over the place. You must put together and know the perfect will. Understand or not? Physical health, oh, bad health, huh? Anyone have bad health here? Yeah? So, some people talk about health, huh? 
What is the perfect way of revival? To live long. Yes, hallelujah. All the people in the Bible, you know, blessed people, they live long. Who says so? If you talk about physical health, what, is the, what gives the most meaning to your physical body? When you live for the Lord. So your body is the instrument for God, for the kingdom. See, this is the first thing first. So you use it as an instrument for the Lord and Lord, let the Lord take charge of your health and as you put your focus on the Lord, you'll be strengthened. Your physical body will be strengthened. And then you live by grace, you see. I'm, I mean, for those who are sick, you see. So, you see, pastor, huh? some pastor, they come, God, I bless you. You know, good health forever, you know, this kind of thing. It's not wrong. Sometimes you pray for people, yes. But you must deliver the right will. It's that everything is, well, you have long health, long life, you know, if you believe in Jesus, just share one you get. Not necessary, you see, not necessary. But you must know the will of God when you pray for a person. It's very clear cut to me, the perfect will. If you don't know how to test the will of God, come to me, okay? I don't want you to get your... Okay, some people confuse between belief system and methodology. I'll give you an example. You have children. Children. How to teach your children? Oh, the Bible has a lot. They say, um, don't embitter them, you know, in case they lose heart. The uh, Bible says, teach them in the promise of the Lord. So a lot of parents try to teach the children, hey, you know, you must read the Bible, must pray. You, know, you, know. you think that's the will of God? It's part of the will of God, but it's not the holistic yet. Because when God gives you a child, what is the first thing He wants you to know? And if you are blessed in Jesus Christ, He's the covenanted child. If you are Abraham, He is Isaac. You believe this, look at Him this way first. Then you will be able to teach Him. Even when He's rebellion, you don't lose that perspective. Yes, He can be rebellion. He can be like Jacob. You know, always lying to the father, wherever, you know, mess up things. But he's the covenanted child. You see, that God will bring him back. You look at your child this way, you don't get too upset by his rebellion now. You get know what I mean? Then you can teach him and don't embitter him, you know. Along the way, you know how to teach him the way of the Lord. So before you teach him the promise, you must believe the promise first. So, you see, I'm very clear. Slightly, if not clear about this, okay, you get the wrong spirit. You can be zealously wanting to teach your child but you embitter him unknowingly you embitter him with what? with the Bible <laughs> you embitter him must pray, the Bible says must read Bible <laughs> you little child you, you, kid, you, you don't know God God punish you now <laughs> no. you see, the kid grow up more wow, resentment with God resentment God, I'm thinking, this, these are the things, real things that happen now. I'm not making things up this happen in the church all the time Okay. Okay. So people take the methodology. Oh, how to teach? Wow. How to live a good marriage life? What is the ten commandments of marriage? How to live happily ever after? No. These are methodology. You need belief system first. The right, perfect will of God. The holistic will of God. You know already. Then you live according to that. Okay. Some pe people ask me. So, Pastor, how? To get the perfect, to you is very clear, but to us sometimes very blurred. We don't know how because we have thousand and one situation. We don't have every situation. We cannot get the will of God. Okay, listen, how to get the will of God so concisely and with sharpness? When you have a spirit, when you have a spirit that love God, Jesus said, love me. Love God and love man. This sums up the whole commandment. Right? Jesus said that, right? Love the God, love God, your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your heart, right? All your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. So Jesus said, So if you have a spirit that love God and man, you will be able to judge a situation correctly and know what the Lord wants me to do. Very easy one, very easy. You ask yourself, before you, you commit to something or you judge someone, yes, is this a spirit that loves God and men? Ask yourself. Okay. Before I judge Charlene, so, love God and men, love her lives, look at her, I know, what is the word God has for her? 
I will know. Very correctly. I'll give you an example, uh, very practical examples. Because this is what I've been in church. You are youngsters. Some Christian says, singers, singers, they say, Pastor, we fell in love with non Christian. How? It's not as if we won. Or, not, not say non Christian, uh, but very weak Christian, very carnal Christian, but don't know why we have feelings already. How? But the Bible already says, do not be yoked with unbelievers. The Bible already says that. But now I have feelings already. How? Let go, I also not happy. Go together with him or her, I also not peaceful. You see? Dilemma, right? Dilemma. But is God a rigid God? But you ask God, I want to let go. But cannot. Some people say, cannot let go. How? So, you don't focus on that. You come back to this. Lord, I just want to love you, obey you, I want to love men. I want to be a blessing to people in my life. You test this one first. You confirm this in your heart, then you will know. If you love God and men, you are faced with that situation, what is that first thing you will do? What is that first thing you will do? No one can answer me, right? <laughs> that means you haven't grasped what I'm trying to say to you. You see? What is the first thing you will do? Some people say, Lord, I believe I can change him. I can convert him. Give me the strength. Go for it. That's it. You are living in your own desire. You see? <coughs> if the Lord already says that, but you cannot control, what is that first thing? You become passive. Passive. Passive, then see how the Lord works. You see, that's the right way. If you love God and man, you will not initiate. You will become passive. Am I right? You, you get? I give a, I give a testimony. Before my wife went together with me, she had a very eligible non-Christian that went after her. <laughs> very eligible. How eligible, I don't know. <laughs> so, the thing is, um, okay, my wife has feelings for her then, you see? So, for, uh, for him. So, but, He's a non-Christian. She, she was just a Christian for two, three years then. Two or three years only. But this is a Christian like her. She also like this guy, but cannot outrightly reject him because like him, see, but non-Christian. So she became passive and say, uh, I give you three years. La. <laughs> three years, you know. Uh, so during these three years, you know, then commit to each other and then ask her to come to church and then and let her mingle with peop the church people, the brethren, and then observe him. You know? Because when, when you like someone, you go to church, you only have one purpose, so definitely, right? <laughs> definitely. So my wife did that. Uh, along the way, as you know, of course, the result is, God showed it very clearly, there's someone more eligible. <laughs> 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 so God shows there's not a man for her. And she starts to, when she sees how she, he reacted in church, reacted to the sermon, to the, mm, reacted to God, it became clearer and clearer. And then she let go of the struggle, you know, you see? And then after a few, about a few years later, a better man came along. <laughs> so, believe this, boy. Believe this, guys. Believe. Huh? You don't believe this, you're not Christian. Believe this. Because God always has the best for you. Why worry, man? You see? The problem is, you didn't pause to restore this spirit to love God and man, to want to seek His will. You only start from, Lord, I believe I can convert him, I can change him, you know, no matter the personality difference, the age difference, whatever. <laughs> you see, you start out with the wrong footing. That's why you don't get the guidance of God so clearly. People ask me, Pastor, why God guides you so clearly but not ask something is wrong with your belief system. That's why you ask your spirit, you will know. You see, you are upright before God, you do it the right way. You see, God will lift you up and lead you step by step through the process, you see. It's not tough when you are following Jesus or walking with Jesus. It's tough when you walk in front of Jesus. Amen or not? I'm giving you all the answers now. Uh. Listen up, church. <laughs> uh, Learn the way of the Lord. You see, 
so <clears throat> I, I cannot finish with this, okay? Uh, I, I cannot finish with this, but I think this is very important. The spirit that loves God and man. The spirit. This one tells you all the perfect will of God. If you really love God, and ask yourself, would you not tithe? Would you spend your finance anyhow? Would you not, you know, a lot of things, would you manage your time like that? You will not, you not do that, you see? You know, because there's, if, if pastor is going to come out and say, hey, this, 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 this can, this cannot do, you know, see, you get sick. And God is not like that. God just gives you the spirit and then the principle. And then He wants you to receive guidance through the spirit. So everyone hear the will of the Lord for himself or herself, you see? See, this is the way the living God guides us. Even, you know, some things you need to change. No one asks you to change, but God asks you to change, you know. If you have a spirit that loves God and when you're sensitive to Him, you know, Lord, this is something when we have breakthrough, I cannot be living in this all the time. You see? You know what to change. You see? <coughs> Listen up. This is, you get a spirit that loves God. So always learn to welcome the Holy Spirit. Face, acknowledge the Holy Spirit. Whatever you do, Lord, I want to seek your will. Not my will first. See, pause for a moment. If you're unsure about something, be passive first. Passive. Let the Lord show you first. Okay? Clear enough, huh? Then you get this belief system right. So, listen, when you have this belief system right, what is that next thing? Let's be frank about it. If you want to sustain this kind of belief system, uh, easy or not? Joel, easy or not? Be kantan, right? <laughs> not easy, man. Because why? Right, there's an enemy inside you. Satan, he will, he will tell you everything. But just don't think with the mindset of a child of God. Satan's like that. Satan will bring you away from the concern of the covenant and to the concern of the world. Right? Satan is like that. That's why people, no one will watch soccer with the concern of God. <laughs> Everyone will watch soccer for their own concern. They play, get entertainment for themselves. They cannot do it in the Lord. You see why? Because this is how Satan works. Satan is in you, in your flesh, in the surrounding circumstances, in the words of men, opinion of people. Come and can lose your heart, you know, serve your desire so that you live for yourself. Not only for, for your flesh. If you can live for your spirit, it's good. You live for, for yourself, for your flesh. You see? Covenant. So people go to work just for money, just for salary, you know, you see? And then Satan really hate it when you seek the way of God. You see? Satan will always come there. Do whatever you like, whatever you desire. You see? Of course, God says, if you are in me, I'm in you. Ask wherever you wish and it will be given you. So Satan always say, it will be given you. Ask, ask that one. <laughs> but not the one in front. You know what I mean? You don't know how to seek the way of the Lord. You just ask what you want. So Satan always twists the word of God a bit. A bit. Just a bit to make you think differently. Be careful. But I'm very cautious about this. I'm very cautious about my spirit. I know sometimes when I'm going to lose my anger, I want to quiet down. I know when I get prejudiced, you know, I'll just quiet down and think about the whole situation again, you see. Quiet down, quiet down. That's why I'm always very clear-minded in the Lord. Very focused in the Lord. You see, you, you must know yourself. You must, everyone must know yourself, you see. Your spiritual man will know himself. Now, it's not easy to sustain, right? Because everyone has this fallen part in them. So you need a good living system. Ah. This is the second thing I'm going to talk about now. Belief system is the first thing to talk about. The second one is the living system. You need to have a living system to sustain the belief system. Okay? You link it up like that. The right living system will help you sustain the belief system. What is a living system? You must center your life. Listen up, huh? Center your life upon the church. Center your life, church. There must be a zhong xing dian, in Chinese we say, a centrality, church. And then, center your life upon the pulpit. What's so great about the church? That is the pulpit. Center your life upon the brethren. What is so great about all these brethren? I tell you, don't look down on your brethren, you know. Don't look down on Joel, no. Maybe he's more valuable than, than Barack Obama in heaven. Why? Hey, you don't believe her? Huh? Why you all laugh? Huh? <laughs> then why you all laugh? Spirit. Ah, you laugh. Huh? 
spiritual value and physical value is different. You live, a person can live one moment for the kingdom. Compare it with one person who lived all his life for the world, even if done great things. Which one is more valuable? That's why this is a paradox. People don't understand. You see, God came and valued people like Peter, not the Pharisees and Sadducees. You get what I mean? When this guy fell, he's a fisherman all his life doing nothing, you know, in, in the Sea of Galilee, <laughs> sulking and then grumbling. But God calls him for a purpose. You see? Center your life upon the church, upon the pulpit, these three things, huh? And brothers. Uh, I'm not going to talk about this. Listen up. Uh, this is a church. I'm here to strengthen the church. Not only that, God wants you to get your living system right. Okay. I'm talking about what do you mean by centered upon? Don't miss this word. Nah. Every word I write up here is very important. Centered meaning your priority. Oh, people say, I come to church. What? What's the problem, pastor? I have a problem, no. <laughs> because you come to church the wrong way, there must be right priority. And I'm talking about concern. When you see centered upon, it's priority and concern. You see? I know you come to church. But it's the spirit you bring to church that is important. The spirit. Listen, do you value a church? Amen. Or? No one there will say amen. <laughs> no one there. Do you value the sermon that's given you every week? Do you value? You value, you value Pastor Sarah? You value? When you look at Mar Muriel every week, she's a brethren. Right? You look at her every week, do you feel different? Same. La. She looks the same. Sick of looking at her. <laughs> <Some other. laughs> ah, you see? You don't value? You don't see her as first lady, <laughs> right? <laughs> you don't see her. Uh, same. Yesterday, last week, the same. This week, the same. Uh, yeah. Every week, the same. Same. Uh. <laughs> see? It, it's your perspective that kills you. You see, your spirit is your perspective. You cannot lie to yourself. Every time I see my brethren, though they make me angry yesterday, that's yesterday. But today, I see them, I see them anew. You see? Because they are citizens of heaven. They are people that God plays value on. So look at them anew. You see? Your priority and your concern. Let me just talk about this. Huh? Pastor Vincent, what do you mean? Huh? Centered your life upon the church. Listen, huh? very important. Huh? What do you mean? Centered your life upon the church. Meaning you value the workings inside the church. You know the, work, the workings things that happen inside the church. This can be a group of 20 people in a church. But a lot of things is happening, you know. And God is most concerned about this place here. Not about what happened in Gurney Drive, but here. <laughs> Gurney Drive, a lot of people go there shopping, happy, you know. But God is concerned about this place. 20 people. See, sometimes finance is lacking in the church. Huh? They say finance... The finances are lacking. Now, I tell you, God is very concerned. So, you test the will of God. You test the will of God, you know, God is going to mow our perspectives, everyone. And then God wants every one of us to take a genuine concern in the finances. You see, God fills the whole universe. God can just give us $1 million right now. But God didn't do that. Because He's concerned about the workings in the church, God will always provide enough but when these things happen, say there's a lack in the church, God wants everyone to be genuinely concerned. So their attitude, their attitude is the one that gives you crown. You see, people don't care. Uh, don't care. Uh, this church money, uh, my money, okay. <laughs> not my money. You get what I mean? Uh, that's not the attitude, you see? So the one who values what God is doing in this church will be pleasing to God. You see? And God finds favor with him. You, you get what I mean? So, whoever comes to this church, say, every Sunday service, someone came into this church. Doesn't matter whether he will come next week or not. The fact that he comes here, this is an awesome church, so comes here, pray for him, minister to him, you know, show your concern to him. See, this is what I want you guys to know. So, listen, uh, at no time, so you look down on what God is doing in the church, even though it's very minute things that happen. So people 
who share the concern of God, they know everything that goes on around this place is their concern. Like if you feel like Dominic, I know. A genuine concern in the church, right? Amen, Dominic. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, I'm not here yet. Okay, so now people want to ask me, so where is the emphasis of God's work in the church? Ah, now I'm talking about emphasis. Where's the emphasis of God's work in the church? Norman. And yeah, hallelujah, man. Praise the Lord. That's why he's the second man. <laughs> Pilpit. Pilpit right? message. Pilpit message. So the Pilpit message should be the most valued thing in the church. Because why? Because this is where God gave the voice. Give his voice to every one of us. Give his voice to the whole church. So the more you value the pulpit message, you will find answers through the sermon. Some people just listen to the sermon and dream away, you know? Some people find real answers and get their problems solved just by listening to one message. You see? That's the difference. You value your concern. Some people go to church because they just like the atmosphere, they like oh, the they like to serve, they like the brethren. I mean nothing wrong. But the message you see you must be ministered through the message so who is the one who lead this message who lead this pulpit who are <laughs> you pastor sarah lah, huh so pastor sarah everyone oh, i tell you everyone values her everyone values her amen lah. so the one who values who loves and protect your pastor will be favored by god i always realize that what i said here is consistent consistent throughout the church if you take her message lightly you're taking God lightly seriously what that mean Pastor Sarah wah, is she, she perfect not? of course not lah. just like Pastor Vincent I'm not perfect also am I right well then she like that enjoy the privilege ah. she's like queen no? <coughs> queen ah. <laughs> the queen of the church no? you think it's easy to be queen ah? you want to be queen or not? you want to be king or not? it's really not easy to be a pastor no you got to take responsibility for everyone's well-being, you know. Every sheep, you know, if it's wounded, if there's a problem, you know, you take care for him, shepherd him, or hold, you know. Other people don't care, you know, but the pastor cares. Even more than their own kids, I tell you, sometimes. Right or not? And if you value Pastor Sarah, what is the next thing you got to value? See if anyone can get this right, Mirel. If you value your mom, not your mom, your pastor. Okay. Who's the person next to your mom? Your dad. So value Jim. Because why? Be oh, amen, huh, Jim? <laughs> I tell you why, because you value Jim. You value Jim, why? Because I have a wife also, I know. When I minister to the people in church, when I'm pastoring in church, I can tell you I'm practically deaf to the needs of my own children. My three children run around, sometimes they cry, whatever, they want to eat this, take that, you know. My wife go and care for them, you know, take care of them, you know, comfort them. My wife does all these jobs while I'm fully focused on shepherding my people, the people of God. So, Pastor Sarah cannot afford, cannot afford to be distracted, especially during important meetings. So there's a gym, so take care of the kids, you know. But you see, people will be wear out, you see. You see, take care of kids every week, you see. It's not easy. Moreover, the church is small, and Jim has the gift of ministering also, I realize, especially the elderly. So, the rest of the people, the rest of the people must be sensitive oh, to give and take. Okay, give and take and help along the way, you know, sometimes. You, you get what I'm trying to say or not? <coughs> oh, no, like that, very troublesome. No. no, you must know. If sometimes, let's say the kids run around, no, no one cares, no, Jim, run around, no, we sit. Then, Jim gets tired out, what happens? So Sarah has to make sure everything works, you see? See, so when the kids run around, actually someone behind should be taking care of and trying to make things. So, if Sarah get distracted by this, so the new friends come here, no one take care, who suffers? The whole church suffers. You get what I mean? Not? 
So when I say the living, the bread and living, it's, God is living among us, not just living alone. So I come and receive grace. I come. Yes, you receive grace, then you know you receive the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Yes, give and take. I try to give my spare, uh, spare help over here and there. And then it's a gyro or whatever, you know, or some kids sometimes live also. Every kid is different. I have kids I know. Every, every kid have their temperaments one. This week okay, next week not okay. Okay? So every, every time when the church is together, everyone be sensitive to the prompting of Holy Spirit. If you're very down that week, okay, Pastor, I almost dying, you know, I crawl to the church. Okay, then I give you the break. You can sit down here. <laughs> no problem. Okay? But every, anyone else, any other people that sees the need, you see, if you see the need, you take a genuine concern, share the workload. Share the workload, okay? Amen or not? Amen. Amen, huh? So, everyone can take a breather. Everyone. I don't mean, oh. I don't mean, well, everyone, I'm just going to help. No. <laughs> Listen to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Listen, ah. You see, God, tahan now. Some people, ah, I cannot tahan ready. Sometimes you cannot tahan, she cannot tahan, you see? Because for our church, my church, we have 20 over children. We know these things happen, you know, say, if some people are, the faith is weak, you know, the parents come, the kids kind of whacked by another kid, you know, then bleeding and leave the church. Right? This kind of thing happens in my church all, all the time. <laughs> it happens in our church, you know, last time. <laughs> the kids fight, huh? then the parents don't want to come to church, I don't know why. So the kids is more important than the pulpit. But, but we cannot blame the people who are weak in faith, you know what I mean? Or not? They, they, they just came to church. So everyone have, have a share. So this is called bread and living. You centered your life. Your living system. You see, when you're concerned, you, see, you will know what to do. You know what to do, you see. This is the whole workings of the Holy Spirit. So I let you understand the practical stuff in the church, you know, on the finances, the workings of the church, wherever. These are the real things that's happening. And how about the brethren? you see? You take a genuine concern in the brethren? Oh, you know, brethren are people... Why? Brethren are people, when you see them, uh, your worldly concern will be gone. Then you restore a godly concern. Am I right? Right, Michelle, when you see me, uh, your worldly concern gone, gone right? <laughs> then suddenly you felt so awesome. <laughs> godly. You only think about the word of God, but not when I disappear. <laughs> so, but when you see the brethren, also the same thing. Oh, because we have the Spirit, we have the Holy Spirit. We see each other, you know, you forget your anger, whatever. Yeah, these are the things. Brethren are very important, you see? So value your brethren. Say, for example, our dear brother Norman oh, got an accident. Wow. Never die, ah? okay, never mind. <laughs> 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 not just, <laughs> it's not just coincidence. God has a reason, you know. <laughs> God has a reason why oh, he went through accident. This is the best time to show concern and pray for him. Intercede for one another, you see? When Elaine and Helen say, writing a blog, not my concern, I don't read one. <laughs> it's a church business. It's, look at this, it's a church business. You see, they are doing this for the gospel. Am I right? They wrote the blog. They're good writers, you know? You see? So you show concern and intercede for them. You see, God works through the gathering of his people. When, the peop when his people put their concern and priority together, you see, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit will come and a lot of problems, minor problems in the church will go. You get what I mean? The problem with the church is a minor problem. This one unhappy with that, this one angry with this and that, you know. Minor problem add up together, become big problem. And then, you see, when a minor problem don't solve, you cannot go forward. So these are the things you're gonna take note of. When you're in church. So I'm saying this not only for the church, this is a bread and living, it's a living system. When you centered your life upon this church, you know, when you live for the church, you realize, you put a priority here, God show concern to everything you're concerned of. You don't have to worry about that, you see? This is a real, real fact. So, everyone, listen to what I'm saying. Okay, pray for this. I'm very passionate with what I've just said, <laughs> what I've just preached about. The church, the pulpit, and brethren. It's together. Three in one Okay? Oh. And then, when we talk about living system, let's be more concrete, okay? Centered upon. When you say centered, centered upon the Sabbath. Ah. So, Sabbath centered life. 
centered upon the Sabbath, centered your living upon the Sabbath. Sabbath is what? Your Sunday service. Why did God give us a Sunday service? Is it a routine, a ritual? No. It carries the voice of God. Listen, uh, the voice of God. The voice of God in the Sabbath through what? When you sing the hymns, when people intercede, right? Oh. When the sermon is being preached, even when you give offering, you know, sometimes God convict you. You wrestle you, right? God is speaking intensively through the Sabbath. So, you no, know, Christian, if you don't attend Sabbath, I don't know how you get a voice of God, you see? And once you get a voice of God here during the Sabbath, what is that voice of God for? Excuse me, can I know? What is the voice of God for? For your seven days of living, only for Sunday, is it? <laughs> so, Sabbath is not only Sunday relevant. It's not only individuals relevant. Some people say, oh, Pastor Vincent only preached this for Tech Hong lah, not for me, no. I don't have a problem with studies. No, no you see, you see, the fact that, the fact that something happened in the church with someone, and then the Holy Spirit prompt the pastor to bring across this message. It got to do with how God is going to guide every one of you for the next seven days. You may not have a similar problem, but God may be telling you to intercede, to pray, you see, all these things, you don't know, your seven days. When we talk about just now, walking with Jesus, follow Jesus. Where is Jesus? Kwabo, cannot see. He has become the Holy Spirit already. And He descends as the will of God, the voice of God. So now, when God is working intensively on the Sabbath, preach the word, the climax is the message. The message came forth, and then you got it. I take it, I don't take it lightly. I use it for my seven days of living. So this is it. The work, the work of God is collective. You always understand. Work in the whole church. God is above all, through all, and in all. <laughs> Among all. And then I'm coming here. And then after that, after Sabbath-centered, after Sabbath-centered, you realize you cannot sustain. So you need to have meetings Meetings centered. Meeting centered living. Because it's very evident that your, your heart will quickly grow cold towards the middle of the week. You just receive a great message today. I guarantee you, two days later, you don't remember what Pastor Vincent said. <laughs> no, you remember. But you find it hard to sustain, really. Because you're living in this world, you're living in your flesh. It's not easy, you see. So, there's a meetings. That's why the church has meetings, different meetings. We have discipleship training. Because this is a discipleship church. That's why discipleship. We have prayer meeting. Why prayer meeting? Can I ask you? Why prayer meeting? Prayer meeting is for what? For you to take a genuine concern in the things of the brethren, the church, the workings of the church, you see? You know, then you can pray, you can intercede. Am I right? Or else you pray for what? You pray for something, you don't find conviction, you don't know. No. You see, you know Norman went through an accident. Even I, when I read the, I said, uh, no, I read the announcement, bulletin, oh, what happened? Uh? So I asked Miriam, you see? I said, nothing serious, no worry, man. But he's being well taken care of. Oh, by who? By this lady in the church? I don't know. <laughs> okay, good. Um, let make sure he, he's in good shape when I come. <laughs> I said that, <laughs> right? So meeting centered, prayer meeting, and we have small group, cell group, or cell group, whatever you call it. You see, to sustain. We don't gather for the sake of gathering, listen. We gather for the need. For the need. You saw the need. Because when you lose faith, when you lose your belief system, you fail in your daily living. Right? You don't have to argue with me. It's a fact. You lose this belief system, you start quarreling with people, get frustrated with life, you know, grumble about things. Right? It's like that. We are made this way. Spirit, soul, spirit, mind, and body. It's the same. You see, God made us this way. So, when you lose this, so you've got to sustain this. When you have this, the problem comes, it's not a problem. When you don't have this, you quickly fall away. You fall because of minor problem. You see, belief system. So, that's why, to sustain. The purpose is to sustain. Sustain your belief system. 
uh, sustain your perspective. Uh, okay, you know my message is always uh, three points and all, right? <laughs> so everyone knows, okay, good. Uh, so I'm coming to the end. Uh, coming to the end, okay. So what's all this for? Pastor, you say, what? Living system, what are you going to do with my life, you see? Listen, huh? After you live a living, uh, a bread and living centered life, you must acquire. This is where you link up. You must acquire the rhythm, I call it. The rhythm of walking with God. in your daily lives. This is what Jesus meant by John 16, 19. On that day, you will see that I live, you also will live. Okay? Do you get the rhythm of what God is working in your life? Your daily living, for it to be productive, you see, we got to get this rhythm right. You cannot be living apart from from God's will, so you must get the will of God. So when we, the rhythm of walking with God, where is God? Holy Spirit, am I right? In you. So the Holy Spirit in you. What is the Holy Spirit, I want to ask you. Just now I just said, what is the Holy Spirit? People only see the Holy Spirit when they attend meetings, special occasion, extraordinary things happen in their life, in their family. Oh, Holy Spirit, God is working. No, listen up, huh? If you know the Holy Spirit like that, you will only pass your day, you know. Because most of your days is you, nothing extraordinary happen. Ordinary things, common things. People like Moses and Paul doesn't see God appear all the time, you see. Most of the time they are managing their family, living, serving in the tabernacle, going to church. Same thing, you see. If you don't see God in your common living, then half of the time in your life, you're living in your own world, you're busy slogging, you know, uh, running around, taking care of family. You see, you don't feel meaningful with life. You don't get a rhythm. There must be a rhythm. You see, God is right there. So learn to see the Holy Spirit in the most common things. Listen, most common thing. I keep on emphasizing. The most common thing, you got to see the Holy Spirit. Where is the Holy Spirit? Moses, where did Moses see the Holy Spirit? Through the temple of God. So I just mentioned, your temple must be well built. Your belief system must be right. You must demolish your worldly system. You, you must differentiate. First of all, you cannot differentiate, oh, I'm thinking the worldly way or the spirit way. Worldly way or godly way. You see, when frustration comes, anxiety comes, you know, oh, this, is, this is something that harms me. You see, that harms my relationship with people. You know, this is the worldly spirit. It's not you, but you must cast it away, drive it away. You must quiet down to listen to the Lord. But most people don't do that. Because why? Their temple is not well built. I've learned to think through this, you know. Identity system of belief, covenant system of belief, you see. Every time I see something, I let it go through this. You see, this is the way you hear, hear the Lord. So you must get your temple well built. Oh, say. If the economy say is going down, I always say economy is going down. People are concerned about this. Your students don't care, huh? You get your allowance, that's it. Right? And so but economy going down. People are worrying. People talk about this. You hear things like that, you must see. Hey, children of God. Things happen, people are uptight and anxious. This is a good time for we children of God to stand out. You see? When we think like that. If you think the other way, wow, no job sound man. Well, people have no jobs, no money, no offering. You start thinking like that and you move your thoughts this way. You must hold it, hold, and then go back. Children of God never lack. God is the one who provides. Money is not the one who, 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 who gives me provision. My future is not on a qualification, but God is my future. Am I right? God is more, more concerned. Think through this. And it's all for the purpose of full gospelization. When I live for this, the Bible has shown me no one lacks. No one in despair, no one put to shame when they live for the gospel. See? This is it. You have to get your temple. And you, you realize you don't know the will of God. You quiet down. You have the spirit that loves God and man. You face God like that. Lord, 
If you have loved Mirelle, if you have loved Yvonne, how would you react to them? You see? This is it. Restore this. And then God will show you. The voice of God is very clear. It must go through a temper. That's why God says, build the temper. And the glory of the Lord fill the whole temper. Where is the temper now? Excuse me, Helen. Where is the temper of the Lord now? Hmm, belief system. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Oh, y'all learn about this this way? Learn on, okay? This is not concept. Everything must hit you right there in what you are searching, the answers you are searching for right now. It's in this message. And then you get your temper right. What is the next thing? There must be what? Daily confirmation. Ah, you confirm the word of the Lord? Oh, you cannot just say, I'm a child of God, I'm a child of God. <laughs> no. You don't confirm. What's the use? Uh, covenanted people, you know, uh, covenanted people, I'm sick of covenant radio. Right? What is that? No. Why? Because you never confirm. When you don't confirm, it's not real. I always say that, huh? When I talk about confirmation. The other day I was talking about this law, right? The law of Newton, the third law of Newton. Every action, there's an opposite equal reaction. This is a scientific fact, right? Physical law. Scientific fact. You don't believe, right? Knock your head against the wall. Then you see, oh, you confirm it. Oh, wow, pain, man. That's an opposite reaction. <laughs> then you know from then on, wow, my xiao xiao no. This law is real. This is a spiritual fact. Uh, the scientific fact. So now for spiritual fact, you're a child of God. God never leaves you. He always has a divine purpose for you to use you for full gospelization and His perfect will is with you. If you seek Him out, seek Him out, you'll never be put to shame. Amen. Spiritual fact. But never confirm. What's the use? It's not real to you. It's not real. So Dominic, if you confirm, I'm a child of God. I'm given the covenant of God. You will realize, yeah, how come? Huh? People have many problems just surround me wherever I go. Right? You start to realize that people have problems come. Even when I'm weak, you know, I start to meet people like that. Oh, I suffer a broken relationship, I see people with a broken relationship. You see? Why? Huh? You see? And then you have passion for them. You have the compassion for them. Why? Because you are people of the covenant. That's why the compassion is there. Doesn't matter if you don't know how to minister to them yet. <laughs> what I mean is, but there's compassion. You, you can feel for them. Why? Why God leads you this way? Why God give you this past, this background? Why? Because you are people of covenant. Nothing is sheer coincidence. You confirm it. You see? Then you will know, yes, God is really real. And are you a child of God? <coughs> really a child of God? No matter how weak I am? Oh, people love the world. Sometimes I also love the world. How, pastor? But the worldly people love the world without restriction. But when you start loving the world, you feel unhappy. I don't know why. You cannot feel peaceful. Because the Holy Spirit, Spirit of Sonship, is already in you. You, you get what I mean? You must confirm it, then you know, yeah, something absolutely already come into me. And God loves me, even when I'm weak now. Then you will stand up and fight Satan. Fight the evil thoughts and all. You see? You never lose your assurance. This is it. So, never confirm, huh? no use. I tell you, it's conceptual only. If it's conceptual, it can never give life. It can never give you strength. So confirm. When do you confirm? Every what? Anyone tell me? Every morning confirmation. Yes. You wake up in the morning, Lord. I know I'm loved. And you have prepared today for me. Today exists for a reason. I know if I go to work now, I go to school now, it's not just going to school. There's a way of God for me. I want to go to school with a heart that acknowledges you and to see what you are doing in my life. You see? So you don't take people lightly, people you met, uh, things that you do, you see? You do it with full focus. You know there's a way of God there. You must do it consistently like that. You see? When you can't be bothered, can't be bothered. God is always not real. You're bothered about Him you realize how real he is. That's why some people always receive answered prayer. Some people for half of their lives cannot see God in their life. You see, because never confirm. 
So morning is most important. When you start your day right, your whole day will be right. It's like that. You never systemize your thinking in the morning. Well, you go around, you bang walls, you, know, you talk to people, you get upset and frustrated. You know, this kind of thing happens. You cannot control your flesh. You see, Satan is so real in this world. So that's why them always must, well, after the temple is built, huh? right? After the temple, what do you do? Just build a temple. Wow, Solomon built a temple. Sui sui. Wow, nice man. All silver, gold. And... What is the temple for? Take home. You read the Bible, right? You build a temple ready for what? <laughs> for you to do sacrifices, <laughs> right? Sacrifice. The shedding of blood. The remembrance of the Lord Jesus, right? The Lord Jesus finished work. Because of his finished work on the cross, that's why I'm given the identity of a child of God, given the covenant, and he's with me, guiding me by the pillar of cloud and fire. The shedding of blood, every time you remember that, right? You do shedding of blood in the temple. You know, Israelites, you know, they do it. Sacrifices is equivalent to your prayer, daily prayer, daily confirmation. You see? So every time I say, why, why, do I, why pastor don't use daily prayer? I can also say prayer. It's the same thing. But I use confirmation because people pray only pray. They don't know this. They only pray one-sided. They ask and ask, you know, like the pagans. They didn't confirm what God already given them. You need to confirm. Morning. Okay? Don't lose it, huh? This is the way you hear the word of God, hear the voice of God. And then in the afternoon, you confirm again. For what? To, re to recharge because why you know after you pray in the morning you go to work or you go to school you know you hear from people you encounter a lot of things you know sometimes right, you get upset anxious about there must be a moment you you quiet down in the afternoon to recharge because for that few hours they have gone through God may be telling you something already you got to hear it you see so afternoon recharge See, after I talked to Highland and Norman, so a lot of thoughts came into me, you know, you see, what God is telling me through them, you know. Then I went back in the, in the afternoon, quiet myself to recharge, you see, so that I can look at everything objectively. It's like that. You need to go through this to be smart in this world. You know, some people, Christians are always dull, you know. Christians are very dull people in this world, you know. Talk to them, uh, say hey, no. <laughs> you know, say hey, no. <laughs> These people are not relevant. People are working, no, no. Just, uh, no wisdom. Why? Because you never see the Lord. Am I right? When you see the Lord, you know how He is working in their lives. And say, this morning, I was, afternoon, I was talk, talking to Norman. You say, Norman worked in a marketplace. Marketplace, people, people yelling to one another. Hey, I just me. Hey, right, right, Kui Lui. Hey, oh, oh, yeah. Ah, marketplace, you react like that because this is the way. This is the way you react in marketplace. But when he's with the Datu and Datins, uh, um, um, um. <laughs> different. Am I right? So he become relevant. You see? Oh, so I told him it's not not about being classy and all. You see, sometimes you become uncivilized with the uncivilized. <laughs> Sometimes it becomes classy with the classic. <laughs> so you must know. See? For what? For what? For the gospel. Amen? You see, this is a living and active Christian life. Amen. That's why you like to be Pastor Vincent, right? Very relevant. <laughs> okay. Recharge, huh? Don't forget to recharge. And then at night, evening, huh? Evening time, you know. This is the one you... Evening, sorry. Evening is the time you, you must collect the harvest. You know how to collect harvest? Or not? Harvest. So you recap back the whole day, Lord, how you have... how I have got my heart before you, how I have blessed people around me, you know? Uh, I have strengthened my brethren, so uh, no, I have blessed my kids, I have comforted my wife, you know, all these things that happen in your daily life, I have worked productively, you see, because the Lord is with me, I saw the Lord with me, that's why I work productively, wisely. You see, these are the things that you recap and get a harvest out of it, harvest. You see, there's always harvest every day. 
When you talk about harvest, uh, people only think about how many people have you le le led to the Lord? Of course, it's harvest, so am I right? But this will happen every day. But every day, as you walk with the Lord, this is harvesting. You see, you are accumulating the testimony, the joy, you see, the assurance in you. So when the day comes, you will minister to people. You see, harvest, you must get it every day. And sometimes in the evening, uh, I usually feel a bit tired because I've been preparing a message for a whole day and all. So usually I will go for a jog. Your exercise, none. Guys, I look at you. Huh? I think not bad. Lah. <laughs> exercise? Exercise to what? To, to give you a, yourself a clear mind, you see? Because uh, you release the stress, you exercise, you perspire, and then you get your strength back. Usually I will go to a stadium for a 3km jog, you know, jog, and then I walk around the stadium and, and speak to the Lord, you know, hear His voice. And even, I, you see, I, the way I pray is it's not richer. It's not a fixed posture. Some people will say prayer. You must sit down, fixed posture, fixed place, you know. Cannot lie down, you know, you see, in case you sleep, uh, careful, uh, you're praying to the Lord, you know. No. Fig Prayer confirmation is about restoring this belief system, confirming that, and hearing the Lord. And then you recap what happened in the day, uh, your relationship, your networking, you know, all those things, uh, words with people, you recap, and then you get what the Lord is telling you. Then you hear the Lord, you feel fruitful within, you see. It's a living Christian life. So everyone, everyone, <coughs> test daily confirmation, you know. So afternoon, evening, harvest, you know. So don't restrict yourself, okay. And what I'm trying to say is when you pray, your prayer must guide your daily lives. Daily, okay. You must link it up. Then you get the rhythm. You will know how the Lord is guiding your lives, you see. Okay, then, of course, where am I? Okay. And of course, um, there will be times. There will be emergency moments. There will be emergency moments that uh, you get anxious, uptight, or angry, you know. These are the time that you, let me tell you, you need to focus a bit. Don't let loose. Uh, don't let loose. Angry, angry lah. Unhappy, unhappy lah. Don't do that, okay? Because this will kill you. This will kill you. You know the flesh is like that. The flesh is living one. If you feed it, it will grow. You feed your anger, uh, you keep feeding it, there will become a point of time you cannot control your anger. You see, this is like, like that. Am I right? You are always upset, upset. You don't go against it, you know, upset, rot, like that. You rot, 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 and die. You see? This is like, it, you see, this is called flesh. Flesh. The flesh is living. Just like the Holy Spirit is living also. So, this is how people get mental problems. They're always depressed, they depressed. Even Christians, they go to church, they don't hear the word of, of course, the pulpit message doesn't give all these promises and covenant. So they just go there for ritual life, you know, uh, ritual Christian life, and then they're still depressed. They never see the Lord, never hear the Lord in their problems. And then come a point of time, they have depression. That's why people ask me, why Christians have depression? Like that lah. <laughs> you never hear the Lord, never confirm. The Holy Spirit never worked through you. Then, that's why you feed your flesh again and you feed your depression and all these things come. Don't let loose. Don't let loose. You focus. You must do focus prayer. Focus confirmation. No. If you cannot do focus confirmation, you're too upset, too frustrated, or too luan really, you know, cannot think, come to church. Come to church, attend the meetings, pray with your brethren. This is the way. And I can tell you, this kind of thing will go when you deal with it. Definitely it will go. If you have the heart to deal with it, it will go. Satan can never remain there all the time because there are angels surrounding you. You must always know, the spiritual realm is like that. You children of God, the ministering angels are with you already. So when you have the heart to deal with it, though it's hard in the beginning, it's always hard, it's like driving gear one, gear two, are difficult, no? Then you will cruise. When you deal with it five times, ten times, 
you know, this kind of anger, this kind of frustration, depression will go. You see? Addiction, this kind of thing will go. Don't let loose. I tell you that. It's suicidal if let loose. Focus, confirm. And you cannot go back to bread and living. Bread and living is the thing that helps you. You see? Bread and, you see the bread and, your depression became half, you see? So you see the brethren, okay, you see Pastor Vincent only, you feel better. You see the light shine upon you because man has spirit. When the spirit shine upon you, it's just different, you see? When you are here, you think differently. You rejoice differently, am I right? When you are at home, you see your children, you see your husband and spouse, well, cannot. <laughs> am I right? So this is the thing. So stay within the brethren, focus and confirm. I tell you that, you got to do this repeatedly. This one, this is the rhythm, uh, that you got to repeat, uh. it's not so easy, repeat. That's why our message, uh, repetitive, right, you realize, repetitive, but I'm always talking about different things, but the same thing. Always talking about the identity and the covenant, but I always hit one spot. Uh, there's one, one spot I'm always hitting. That is a spiritual root, spiritual problem that I'm always hitting at, so that you will be released from there and then see the Lord, how the Lord worked in their lives, you see. When you confirm the word of the Lord, repeatedly in your daily living. And the word of the Lord is not just concept, it's living and active where you can see it's moving, it's guiding you, you know. When you have done that for some time, naturally, naturally, you will hear the Lord speaking to you, not with the audible ear, you will hear it in your spirit. Wherever it happens to you, you will hear it, God will reveal to you, just like who? Abraham, am I right? Abraham walked with the Lord, do the shedding of blood, right? Build the altar for the Lord. Walk with the Lord. Always confirm this. There come Adam. God is going to do great things. God is going to demolish the whole of Sodom and Gomorrah. What did God say? The three visitors say, How can I hide this from my servant, Abraham? I'm going to let him know about this. You see? God let him know about everything. There comes a day when you flip the newspaper, when you listen to the news, you know what God is telling you. But any, every other people don't know what's happening. You get what I mean? Uh, this is called spiritual man. You can, you can know things are happening in this region, in this economy, or even things happen in the politics. You know, this is what, what God is doing for the churches, for His children. You know, you can bring things together. This is a very deep insight, okay? But when you walk with the Lord, the Lord will tell you things. Uh, things happen in the family, people quarrel, anxious, uptight about that. Everyone is so anxious. But you are above that situation because God reveals to you, no, this is not going to harm my family, but God is going to fulfill something in my family. So you remain calm, you know, you strengthen everyone, or you try to help out in the family. You see, things will move. God will work centering upon you when you have walked with God all the time. I'll give you the last, last example. It's like Paul. Okay, some of you are afraid of death, right? <laughs> Paul went through all kinds of threats and dangers in his life. There was a time he went, he was on a ship and there's a storm came, right? The storm came and then everyone's so afraid, even the centurion, you know, they're so afraid, the army soldiers, they're afraid. The storm came, no one can do anything about it. Paul was like sleeping, <laughs> probably. And then a voice came, Paul, don't be afraid. As you have testified for me here, you will testify for me in Rome. You see, your purpose. Be, then stand up, strengthen the people, and bring them to the Lord. Am I right? The Lord must have said that to him. Because the Lord strengthened him, you see, and spoke to him. Now the question I always ask is, you know, Paul's, Paul's disciples also with him in the, in the boat, in the ship, and any other, every other people also, why did only Paul hear the Lord? The question is I want to ask. Why? Can you answer me or not? Why only Paul hears? Ladies, because Paul Hampson, huh? God talked to him. <laughs> why? Because? Because why? He has always been confirming. He has always been hearing the Lord's voice, walking with the Lord in his life. He has been through dangers or so. He has made a covenant with the Lord and he knows God. A lot of times I told him, you will testify for me in Rome. You, Penang Church, you will be a light to the Gentiles in Penang. You will bless this era. And 
Paul has believed this and has confirmed this again and again repeatedly in his life. That's why during the most dangerous moment, he will be able to hear the Lord. But the rest who live their life loosely, you know, <laughs> blurly or whatever, you know, they only kanjong, you know, during that moment they will kanjong me. Well, don't know what happened, you know, how, you know, how to live my life, you know, how to escape this tragedy. But only Paul knows. He doesn't live for himself. He lives to love God and man. You see? He has this spirit in him. That, that is this temper in him after confirmation and confirmation. It begins to speak to him in everything. That's why God says, I give you the Holy Spirit. He will guide you into all truths and remind you of everything I've said to you. He will guide you in all things. Everything. Amen? And that is your living. That is your whole living. When your whole living is guided by the Holy Spirit, that is called prayer and living. You are living a living and active Christian life. Amen? Amen. Come, let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for the time given us. We thank you for the word. And we pray for every one of us here, Lord. We are in discipleship. And we really pray. We want to look to you. And want to build this belief system in us. Lord, as what you have said to us, Lord, we know your words is not in vain. Heaven and earth will pass away, but every stroke of your word will fulfill itself. So anyone who hold on this truth and build this temple inside them and test your will and follow your will, you'll never be put to shame. Lord, thank you so much for everyone. We thank you for CLCP. This is a great church. Everyone who comes to this church is blessed. Amen. So Lord, thank you so much. Lord, bless everyone with the word and let your words keep on ringing in our spirit, Lord. Even as we go back, let us find strength, find encouragement, and find answers from you. Thank you so much. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah.